What you need to know about the Winter Olympics. It was the 25th of January 1924 when the very first Winter Olympics took place in the French Alps. It was called the International Winter Sports Week and featured six different sports. Do note, Scandinavian countries weren't too keen on this separate event as they had already been hosting their own Winter Games since 1901. Four years later, the International Olympic Committee made it a regular feature and staged the Winter Games in St. Moritz in Switzerland. And it was another resounding success. And here we are in 2018 with the 20 third Winter Olympic Games. Number 24. Destination South Korea Hosting city for 2018 is Pyeongchang, located in South Korea. It was there that a temporary structure was built, able to house 35,000 people, and is the location of the opening and closing ceremony. It's officially the second time that South Korea has hosted the Olympic Games, as Seoul hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics. Number 23. Small but powerful Pyeongchang is the smallest host city since Lillehammer took that title in 1994 over Norway. We've mentioned that South Korea have now hosted two Olympic Games, but did you know they've actually bid three times? Two out of three. Not bad at all. Number 22. Costly Exercise We've mentioned that the stadium can house 35,000 people and that it's only a temporary structure, but it's been confirmed that once the games are over, they intend to tear down the stadium. It costs the city $109 million to build it. Such a shame that they can't use it thereafter. Number 21. Frenemies When the games were hosted in South Korea in 1988, the North boycotted the games. This is the first time that both the North and the South are competing under the same flag. The only other time the two have sent joint teams out in the past was in 1991 for the World Table Tennis Championships and the World Youth Soccer Championships. This is a really big deal if you take into account that the North and the South have never signed a peace treaty since fighting that divided them between 1950 and 1950. Number 20. Capital Idea There was little concern about the confusion of the name Pyeongchang because North Korea's capital city is called Pyongyang, and of course, if you're a foreigner, you can see that it's a mistake that could easily be made. In fact, in 2014, Daniel Olome Ole Sapich from Kenya made the mistake of flying into a conference at Pyongyang instead of Pyeongchang. So it was decided to change the letter C to a capital C thereby eliminating any potential confusion. Number 19. Let's speak numbers. This year, more than 29,000 athletes will be participating in the Games. They're from 92 different countries and compete in 15 disciplines. There are 49 events for men, 44 for women, 7 events for both men and women, and 2 open events where men and women compete against one another. It's the USA that are sending the largest delegation ever sent to the Winter Games, with a grand total of 243 athletes. Number 18. Yes or no? The big question on everyone's lips for a long time was, will Russia be competing? You might be wondering why people would even be asking that question, but Russia was actually banned from competing in the games in 2017. The country had been found guilty of what they deemed systemic manipulation of the anti-doping rules. The decision was altered though, so athletes that could prove they were clean were able to compete, but under a tweaked name of Olympic athlete from Russia. Number 17, some old, something new, and quite exciting news was the fact that four brand new events were being added to the 2018 Winter Olympics, making their debut big air snowboarding, mixed team alpine surfing, mixed doubles curling, and mass start speed skating. Number 16. Health and Safety there have been some health concerns with a huge number of staff. Over 1,000 security guards had to be replaced as they all struggled with a norovirus outbreak. It began when 42 security guards were rushed to hospital with vomiting and diarrhea, and it wasn't long until hundreds more were affected. North Korea had been struggling with two strains of influenza, and South Korea were battling with an outbreak of bird flu. Despite all the health concerns, it hasn't dampened spirits or visitors. Number 15. Money Problems with any event of this size, a lot of money gets poured into trying to make it a success. However, it can't be a success without the financial support of sponsors, which is what South Korea are battling with. They've had a hard time securing sponsors for the event, and coupled with disappointing ticket sales, they are $267 million short of the $2.4 billion they need to operate the Winter Games. Hopefully, a surge in ticket sales will help them out of this situation. 
Number 14, ring on the bling. Let's talk medals and see what designer Lee Suk Woo came up with for the 2018 Winter Olympics. The medals feature letters from the Korean alphabet in 3D format. The lined effect was to symbolize tree trunks with the aim to reflect on how far the Korean culture has come. The reverse of the medal shows which discipline it has been won in in the Pyeongchang 2018 emblem. Number 13, age is but a number. What makes the Olympic Games unique is that it's one of those rare sporting events that mixes people of all ages. For example, Claudia Pechstein, the German speed skater, is 45 years old, whereas the youngest person to compete is Vincent Zhu, a 17-year-old figure skater from the US. Some notable older competitors from past events include Oscar Swan, who was 72 when he won a silver medal at the Antwerp Olympics in 1920. Number 12, show your support. It's tradition to have a mascot with each Olympic Games that takes place. Not to mention, it does help to sell that merchandise, doesn't it? The mascot for the 2018 Olympics is a white tiger named Su Horong. The friendly tiger is steeped in Korean folktales and is a part of Korean mythology and culture. Su Horong represents trust, strength, and protection. Number 11, what's your favorite? Here's a list of what sports you can look forward to from the comfort of your TV room. Alpine skiing, biathlon, bobsleigh, cross-country skiing, curling, figure skating, freestyle skiing, ice hockey, Nordic combined, short track speed skating, skeleton ski jumping, snowboarding, and speed skating. Number 10, full sport. It's wonderful when well-known people lend their name to events such as these, and the 2018 Winter Olympics have seen some well-respected ambassadors come on board. Yuna Kin is a former Olympic figure skater, and it was Yuna that lit the Olympic cauldron at the opening ceremony. Other names associated with the event include South Korean President Moon Jae-in, LA Dodgers baseball pitcher Hyun Jin Ryu, and South Korean K-pop star Tae Yang. Number 9. Where to next? The next destination for the Winter Olympics is Beijing. They have hosted the Summer Olympics with great success in 2008, so there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will be even bigger and better. Number 8. Winds of Change Albeit for a short period only. We're no experts on the situation in North Korea, but we can highlight a few hot topics. Kim Jong-un, communism, yes, that's wide open for discussion, nuclear programs, and censorship. Many have asked whether North Koreans would even be able to watch the games, and the answer is yes, with a few buts. They can watch, but it won't be broadcast live, and there will most certainly be censorship. Number 7. History in the Making it's been a long time since Mexico has sent more than one athlete to the Olympics, so they're pretty happy that they have three Mexicans competing. They are Robert Franco, Sarah Schlepper, and Rodolfo Dixon. They all have qualified for alpine skiing. Number 6. First time for everything including competing in the Winter Olympics. It's the first time that the following nations are competing. Ecuador, Eritrea, Kosovo, Malaysia, Nigeria, and Singapore. Number 5. And the winner is… We can't predict the future, but there are ways and means to figure out who might come out on top, although hopefully there will be a few surprises. With fewer Russians competing, bear in mind they were big winners in 2014, it's predicted that Germany will be the ones to take home the most medals, followed closely by Norway and then America. Number 4. Stones Throw Away Seoul is a likely destination for most tourists heading to the Games, and that's roughly two and a half hours away from Pyeongchang. A new high-speed railway was built to cut that travel time by half. Over 20,000 people are expected to travel on these trains daily, which also connects travelers to the airport. Number 3. Not Invited it must have been a bitter blow for the NHL, National Hockey League in America, to learn that they were not going to be permitted to take part in the Winter Olympics this year. The last time this happened was in 1998. The decision was taken to rather send in amateur players to try and make a name for themselves. What do you guys think of that decision? Number 2. Baby, it's cold outside. It's speculated that the temperatures in South Korea at the moment are the coldest they've experienced in Olympic Games since it was hosted in Norway in 1994. One reading from the Pyeongchang Olympic Stadium was negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, news broadcasters working in the region have said that their water-based makeup has actually frozen on their faces while reporting outside. Number 1. Keeping it in the family we mentioned Kim Jong-un earlier, but despite all the factors we mentioned in terms of what happens in North Korea, what they have done differently this year has surprised many. Kim Jong-un's younger sister, 
headed to South Korea for the Olympics, which is the first time this has ever happened. She apparently brought with her a personal invite to South Korea's president, Moon Jae-in, to join her brother in North Korea. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. What do you guys love about the Olympic Games? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos just like this. Thanks for watching.